I see Donna with the lift. They were working on the other. Yeah, on the roof. They were working on the eaves. Yeah, I think it looked like a solid. Great. Yeah. I haven't been through there in forever. Oh. I know. We we all have those areas. It's right on the main drag. Well, we all have those areas. <laughs> Trust me. Right on the main drag. Well, yeah. We all have those areas. And you just your head. I got a good one. You want to go with the mic? Mine made the Don Roberts is the PowerPoint. Oh, go to. But he showed off there. Yeah, I remember going down to Big Old Frank to send a prank. Oliver's. That was on there. That was the one. <laughs> I know. There's no roof on it. There's no side. roof on it now. It's like condemned. Why aren't we. You didn't know if Frank was working or his wife there. I'm trying to last time I come and talk to the my ports, emergency things down. Yeah. But somebody paid the taxes. Oh. Can you believe that? <coughs> somebody paid the taxes on that building. It can't be very much. No. Oh, good. Business. Oh, I have no idea. He wasn't here yesterday. No. I haven't seen I think a lot of them maybe take advantage of Zoom. They could. They could. I'll go. I'll go. Thank you, though. I can't stop to read this. Limbed over it. Um, <laughs> I think it's still as it is, but moving forward. Can I count more that you can vote as long as you're in a place where other people can come if they want? Right. Yes, you're supposed to. Yeah. Good morning, Joe. Hey. How are you? I started out. Almost as good as you. Almost. Almost. I can't get that high. Okay. Yeah. I'll never get that high. Oh, but I'm happy where I am. Good. Good. It just comes from both. Oh. Well, I don't got my head on. That's all right. That okay? That's fine with me. Well, Mike says it's okay, and <laughs> I know I'm good to go. I know I'm good. Anything good this morning at public health? No, it's pretty quiet. Right. Right. Well, okay. I mean, I, I, I don't make it in there this morning. I did. I see it's working out. I just want to listen. Like three hours. Three hours. I don't know. I'm teasing. Yes. 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 Uh, 
when we were excited for the fact that all roads I Okay, I guess Justin, you're up. I really don't have too much to say. To say. Um, Tom first met at the shelter that's Tuesday. I hosted them. That was a lot of fun to talk with them. They are asking if the board of supervisors, uh, or they asked me five percent to the board, they would like to do a countywide enumeration instead of individual towns. So we discussed how that would work. They would like to do it this year. I just don't know if we could get it around in time to do it this year. I know the town of Gainesville just did it last year, so that might be pushing for a town, pushing it if a town is just on it. I do, I do recommend that we do consider it, and for a couple of reasons. Uh, the door-to-door -door thing with the liability, I, I have to tell you when Daryl and I are out ticketing, unless I've been to the residence and I'm comfortable and know I'm okay, uh, we go in Paris town. The people are just not so nice. They get angry. If you're the only government they see, you're in here. And, um, and it could be just a top of the road or gas prices or something federal or Supreme Court made over there. You just hear all and you just listen and you kind of uh Daryl and I kind of practice how to bring it down or you know and calm the situation down. So um I do think it's a good idea. I know that there are some People aren't going to be honest, they're going to get that. Um, but you're going to get that even if you go door to door. It's hard to catch people. I think the majority of people are good pet owners and want to do the right thing. So, what, what we kind of come up with, and I'll let you guys let me know what you think, that it would be uh, organized by my department and we would use the tax rules, which would also be helpful. For instance, the town of Pike has in Gainesville. Zip codes, they have pike and they have some lists, zip codes in them, just because the way the town line runs. You get uh, a nasal has Warsaw in some of Weathersfield. So uh, you, you never know where that zip code is going to go when you do a town. So the way it was done before is they used the zip codes, which meant some of those towns didn't get the information by mail done. But if you do it county wide, it's every resident you get. So I think that might be a good way of doing it. You use the tax rolls and do it as a, a postcard in bulk and um, then in advertisements and do any free advertisements with you know, and radio or, or you know, radio stations and stuff. Then we take those bills and put them all together and divide it by the 16 towns. So it's not coming out of my budget. Each town is going to pay for it, but it will be done but I, that's one of the things I was concerned about. Maybe the population would be higher in one town versus a smaller town. So I'm not sure how that would be done, but maybe I could work with someone to figure out that. But it might be a nice way of taking the liability off the individual towns by the enumeration, enumerator. And egg and mark is, I don't even think it's recommended. I think it's mandatory that each town does it every two years. And obviously we haven't done that in our counties because you can't find people. Who wants to do it? Drive around now with gas prices almost five dollars a gallon, and to drive around and go three or four times to the same dresses home where they won't answer. You gotta kind of catch them as they go in. This postcard postcards <coughs> postcard I'll come back to you and you but that's some pile that. That's something we have to come up with. I think we could do it and then uh <laughs> we'll do a little bit more work, and it might be something that would be a better winter project for us when it's a little quieter. This time of year would be really a lot of extra time. Well, you're doing it by tax, by um, the tax rolls. You know, you probably just send, you can do it by how many you send out of the town. Right. You can take your total <laughs> expenses and how many you send out of per town. Per town. You'd have that number. And then you can't have not many dogs on the chat. Yeah. Okay. Yes. The Tom Clerks were really poor. The ones in that, that was like, wasn't, it was a little more than a third of them were there, I think, that, that come. <laughs> but I knew it had to come to the egg market for them. I'm sure it has to go to the full board. Maybe there'll be some towns that want to opt out, you know? Um, I don't know. 
I do know that one, um, they, the ones who have done have been happy with postcard ones. I think the town of Perry, Tom Gainesville, they were pretty happy. There's a certain amount of time people have to take care of this. And then if they go past it, we present like a $5 charge. So it kind of can pay for itself. We don't want to make money, but we want this to break people. If we did it like in the winter, we could have could advertise the first free babies clinic for those who not license their dog, and then they could come to and that would be in the middle of the county at the, at the highway department. The first one is like the first or second Saturday of March. And we put right on the card that they can pre-register. So a lot of that stuff can be taken care of, but we would make the date pass that rabies clinic so they could do it. That's my suggestion. I just don't know through the summer and by fall if we'd be able to get it ready and be able to do it in 22, maybe. And I don't know if I need to put it in my budget to cover it and then get reversed. I don't know how that will work. So that would be something I have to do in August for July when I do my budget. So I don't know how that all works, but we, it was a part of a roundtable discussion. So. I know our yes. clerk asked yes. us or asked me to support it. Yeah. Oh, it makes sense. Really. We better do it here. Yeah. It's, it's it is funny. Sometimes we'll have somebody we just can't take it, we can't get them to the answer, and then we pick their dog up. It was like Sarah and I, we got a few stories from Perry where we didn't think we'd ever get a dog license. And then I picked it up because it was running free. And then they come and claim it's like, oh, you're three years behind us. We couldn't catch you in the dog. Fine. <laughs> and Justice, one question, one question I have for you. How are we having as countywide? I know we're fortunate we have a, a justice that takes it serious. As you know, uh, how is it throughout the county? It's getting better. I, I'm meeting with, uh, I met with Warsaw and, and they kind of, they're coming around. There was a few that were just dismissed. They were like, gosh, it's the same people popping up. And what I'm doing now in the towns when if it's a repeat offender and we every year go after them, every year take them, I'm actually drafting a small little note to the judge so he's aware. Because he might not remember this person a year later or six months, you know. Yeah, so uh, I put a little letter with it that, you know, town clerk has sent notices, I've sent notices. This is repeated, same person, same pair of dogs, usually not licensed or recurrent with rabies when we have four clinics or five clinics a year. I'm pretty clear on it. So that I think once the judges know that now it's better, that's what we're doing now in Warsaw. And they, they seem to be responding. We had a nice meeting with the judges in Warsaw, I thought. So um, they were just going by the prosecutor. And if he was denying it, telling them to dismiss it or reduce it. So now that letter that the, the, the prosecutor will see to it. So uh, I have no problem with meeting with the prosecutor. If we have three or four go through and it shouldn't have, I don't need that. And we got to clear that up because. It goes out in the community that you own so what you just take the ticket to six times out. But um, I'm meeting with Orange Hills um, for next next week with the town with town and to see if they because if it needs to upgrade some of their zoning laws and stuff like that. They've asked me to come up. While I'm there, I'm going to talk about the judges too. Because there's been a couple of dangerous dog complaints that have been just thrown out. And we had proof on video of the dogs killing. And they still dismiss them because someone threatened to get a lawyer. I say, bring it out. We got a video. They come and play their dogs because we picked them up. So, um, so we just kind of handle them as they come. But most towns don't have a problem with it. They realize the last thing we want to do is take it out. So I try to put a little note with those tickets fine. Drop them off when they drop the Is there any other companies that have done this? I think uh, I, I can research, but I think a lot of Livingston County are doing the postcard one. As far as judges, there's always big complaints when we go to uh, the big meetings, which we haven't had since COVID. They're, all of them have problems with their judges. I, I never raise my hand to say I do, but just in general, that's always something I can work out. You know, I don't know if you, know, if you want to just let 
you guys discuss it and get back to them. I know the town clerk's going to want to know that at least for some of them, they're pretty anxious about it. Um, some of them feel bad that they haven't done it in a long time. They just can't find people. And to be honest with you, right now, I wouldn't recommend sending people out with a COVID thing. People are just not so nice. I'm sure you see it. You see it. So do I like send a letter out to each town so they can bring it to their board and address it? I wouldn't mind to be honest. I'm figure out just how much it's gonna cost you, like the postcard and stuff. I'll get I'll get like a ballpark of yeah, figure out how much. And I wouldn't mind going to each board, taking the time to meet with each board and presenting it. Uh, I don't mind doing it. I actually kind of like it. Touch on this. Yeah. Sarah, Yeah, I think to look at her card, what she used. Well, oh, like, well, look, he's talking about Sarah upstairs. Oh, I never okay. think that you would want to talk to his Sarah, too, because she's, they've been doing it. Yeah, and, and Lisa, I'm sure, could help me out with, because they did it. I think it was a little over for the town last year for us. It was a, it was a, just right around six hundred, maybe a little more, to send the cards out to and have them printed and to. Was it the advertising too? No. no, we did not do an advertisement. We just did the cards and as I, and I'm going to I, I will say we had very good success. And as um, the clerk says, we want to stay away from if all possible, so they go out in January because we have several clerks now that are tax collectors and that's your busy month. So you don't want to do, so your dog licenses come due while you're doing your taxes. I think she said so, after March. Yeah, so she said after did, March. And, what if we did like middle of February, so they've got, it yeah. goes out and they've got, yeah. Even if you sent the cards out and you, you're not gonna be done until March, April, do you have your stuff gathered? Yeah. To get it forwarded out. So, do you think I should go to each town and present it, or just do a like an email to the town clerks to put it on the agenda, <coughs> and then they could have come, call me if they want to talk to me? I think you know, the clerk is the, the local person takes care of it, and they should be okay. Make sure you know so, how much you're going to charge before you go out. Yeah. I mean, I'll get I'll get with Lisa and Sarah and kind of see <laughs> what the Costs were, and then I'll go up and talk to the other Sarah. You said we saw in Rhode Island. Yeah, maybe we need to. Can you properly use it? Can you get mailings that probably lose there or yeah. make it lands or yeah. things like that? I don't know if you should separate that out or not. Well, time. she just did housing, you know, with the bargain. Yes. She's just doing that. I would think that it, I mean, you might be able to use the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying we have those kinds of houses on this Well, I'll, I'll, you know, I think it's a good summer project for me to get ready and maybe present it all to you back um, in the fall. But it might take me a while to get it done. We're busy right now at work, so the shelter, but we'll get it together. I'll let the town clerks know. We're going to kind of wrap it up by fall so they can present it to their boards. And then do it maybe February or something. I think they'd be all right with it as long as we're trying to do it. So if we tell them so they have to out. Uh, Justa, we just did one last year as well. We hired someone to go door to door and it was it was rough. <laughs> it was very rough on her. And um, I mean, I think my town would definitely go for it. We had We struggled to find somebody to do it. But I think it would need to be prorated for my town to be on board, obviously, mm -hmm. we're small. Sure, and I agree with that. I do. How much did you get? It was a wash. I was just telling Dave, it was a wash kind of by the time we collected fines and fees, and we don't overcharge for anything. And our justice is very generous as well. So um, we kind of, it was like a basically a wash, but at least we did it. Um, so it probably cost us three to four hundred dollars. And then so we got it back. 2023 would be a good with your. Yeah. yeah. 
through the tunnel that we had the guy that came on and did his chihuahuas. Yeah. They were rodents. They were rodents. <laughs> they had to pay the bill, they were rodents. He printed off an article of a YouTube or something <laughs> oh, that said right. that chihuahuas are, are not dogs, are not canines, they're not canines, rodents. So we tried to get the judge not to make him license these rodents, and yeah. it didn't work. <laughs> Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> I did, and I'll tell you, the ticketing down there was tough. They were, people were not nice. No, they were not. And I was glad I was there with my clerks a couple of times. When they came in. When they came in. Yeah. yeah. It's a different world than it was when you could hire a teenager to go out and do this. You know, I just, I wouldn't, and the plus of COVID is still running around. You don't want to expose anybody if you don't have to. So. And why do you have the racism? Like, what's the importance of that? Well, it, initially it started. Um, because of rabies. Um, cats get rabies. Yeah, you know, unless it's cats. They have no provisions for cats in any market, well, except for neglect. Yeah, some people are like, why? I know. Because what was the purpose? I passed around last time I was here. My dad's dead. My dad's uh, 85. This dog license when he was a teenager from Monday, 1949, 1951, 48. So they that was Monday. Um, film or not even, and usually down the southern, <laughs> you know, comes sometimes and always do that. So it's but I think it's why people are like, why don't you just go down and have a cat or any other pet that I have or any like my cows? Well, I think, I think or, also know. because of uh, dogs getting involved with livestock was <laughs> another one. Yes. And then I think you can reimburse some of that. Yes. That's kind of how it started. Yeah, about Chicken, all, chickens okay. also. Yes. And we're talking past dogs back in the 50s and 60s where there'd be 30, 40 and moving in the packs and hit a farm and, and kill everything. And when I was first starting licensing for us, well, it, it brought in revenue to be able for the farm to come back <laughs> and, and get money back. because they lose so much money. Well, a lot of a lot of communities also have zoning limits on how many dogs you can have on your property. I know, like the county store, I think it's two, two or three per household. So you can't have. Um, and, and and you you permit, right. But you still and they, and that's considered that's not under any market law any, anymore. Kennel there were kennel licenses and kennel permits. Kennel permit is all through your zoning, but right. kennel licenses for the register anymore. A lot of people get that confused. So say, well, I've got a kennel license. Well, we don't have any kennel licenses in Wyoming County anymore. Oh, uh, one time Tom Webbs they kept that in their model. They, because they had so many breeders there. But I don't recommend it because most of the time when you go in and check it out, there is a lot of dogs not on that list. A lot. Of, no permit. I'm in Tommy Gainesville. It was a woman with the Shiloh Shepherd breeder years ago. Uh, she brought in these pre made, they were beautiful certificates. So, like what she called purebred dogs, and they weren't. They were mixed breeds. But she made these beautiful certificates and talked to Tom Bergman to let her license and under a purebred license 52 dogs. She was breeding them. And uh, so I come on board and we were talking one day and I said, let me see what those certificates look like. Because I don't think Shadow Shepherds are considered a breed with a AKC. So she showed me them and I could see right away they were beautifully made, but they were definitely just made. They weren't through American Kennel Club. So I said, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna make copies and have our egg market people look at it. Well, they called me right away and said, no, 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 that these are not, they cannot be under the purebred license. So we went and talked to her and she kicked me off the property. So I wrote her up, I, I ticketed her for 52 unlicensed dogs. None of them had current rabies, none of them. So it was 52 dogs in that shared road area, right in the middle of nowhere. And all the raccoons and stuff, no rabies shots. Right in the middle of the swamp. Right in the middle of the swamp, yeah. You know so, and that's like. one of the things I tell <laughs> people, right if you didn't license your job, you probably wouldn't keep up on rabies. It's kind of like your car. If you didn't have to register your car, you wouldn't have inspected. I would, until all of a sudden I didn't have brakes on. Oh, <laughs> but, you know, in order to get it, to get everything, you have to have it inspected. So, it's kind of like, I do keep, I know people bring that up, but it is a flaw. Justin, most of the breeders in the county sell to private individuals. They don't. They, do they sell their puppies to private individuals um, through the, like the AKC website or something, or do they? We don't have any um, pet store suppliers, right? Correctly. Okay. Yeah. And so, a market law did 
to sell puppies in, in New York State, if you sell over 25 puppies a year, you have to have a pet dealer license. They come out and inspect your property. Okay. So if you sell that many. So if I get like, somebody will call me and say, I bought a puppy and I don't know if this breeder. So then I start kind of spending a little time on Facebook. How are they advertising? Then I alert Albany and say, I'm kind of watching. So they start doing the same. And that's when we start seeing a guy, we got five dogs for sale in February. Before they know they're accumulating, they think, oh, we got 35 dogs to leave sold. So then they they go out. And, and there is some laws going to be changing right. on, on pet dealer uh, in rescues. I will tell you, that's kind of on the back burner. I probably shouldn't say it a lot, but there are a lot of rescues who have no, once they're a 501c3, we have no rights to them unless they're neglect. And that's trying to change. But they need more people in the markets to do this field work because there's just not enough. Right. That, and that's where we see a lot of the horde animal learning is to what they call a rescue. And some of these rescues are. I mean, they're probably going to worse places than they were being rescued from. Well, there's a fortunate one. I kind of don't have a lot of that, but it's all of a sudden will rise up, you know, along here. Like, and that person. And they don't care, they're right around the corner from the shelter. I mean, we had it. And I guess almost at the top of their house from our shelter when I went there. There was 31 dogs there. Then wow, I mean it was terrible. So yeah, you never know. And they're, they're all gone now. They're, they're all gone now. They may be passing the puppy mail bill is what they're voting it as regarding the the backyard breeders who sell the dog to <laughs> pet stores. But um, that's the loophole you just talked about why the other legislators don't come forward because a lot of them can convert to rescues and then pet stores can be selling rescued animals. Yes, like, like in the town of Bennington, um, that man who's got this sanctuary, mm -hmm. those dogs will never leave. So he's got to license those dogs. Right. Uh, but they're going to change a lot of the rescue laws. They are, and which is the age. Absolutely. Then it comes to a point where we're not even going to be able to keep up. Everybody's trying to make a buck and they can make it quick. You can take a golden and start it at 2500 and people will pay. And it's just a mystery. And you're beautiful little dogs. And yeah, you know, I love dogs, period, but that's a lot of money. But people will pay. So for breeder, we just had two surrender that were 11 weeks old. Because one had shorter, two tired curly hair, and nobody wanted it. And he also had a thing called puppies triangles. And he was cured from it, but they didn't want to sell it. And the other one was too short, too uh, smooth here. And now we could buy it. So they bring her to the shelter and strike her for $20. They come bring her for that. But yeah, they or they kill it. Mm -hmm. I'm being honest, they, that's what they used to do. They couldn't sell them there because they don't want to give away. Because then they sell there, they give to us. Yeah. We have a lot of good breeders out there. You know, they're under egg and markets, but they're out there. You have to be careful. We entertain a motion to let the gentleman shoot this occupied dog. Hey, how are you guys in the phone next time? You see, the report was attached to the report. Mm -hmm. Your report was on the tax. Do you have anything to highlight? Oh, I didn't. Oh, gosh. No, I don't. I just said we're doing, we had groups come in. We did my facts in here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I know I can. Yeah, no, that's okay. I can do it like on Sunday morning. Okay. okay. I don't have any work for this. But it's there. I will. I, I'll find it and yeah, send it down and add it to the next one. I don't, okay. I don't see it. Oh yes, I can. Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 First, I was going to say that the pipe was saying that the pipe was standing in the pipe, and that right now, I was going to say that the pipe was standing in the pipe. I was going to say that the pipe was standing in the pipe. I was going to say that the pipe was standing in the pipe. I was going to say that the pip
the clients are you know, the three million of them that don't last one this year. Three point eight million. The state only put out thirteen million, but they're going to increase that, we believe, because we, Wabba County, out and up, writing all the grants, they apply for just short of four million, and they do a pretty good job of grant writing. What's going to do a tremendous yeah, job? Lots of dollars. I don't know how much more the state will put in, but they're going to increase that 13 million, which is a gross amount for the whole state, state yes. which is thick and feed. Yeah. Do you expect Amy to be here? Yeah, I'm sure she'll be here at some point. Yeah, we took down the department. It's actually, you see the email, Commissioner Ball, they ordered these. Or put you down on the lights for our new press arm, which is players in the Sunny Bowl Farm, Butler's Cedar Star, Shawana and Casta Isle. That's the orchard down there by the middle of the basin, I believe. Those are the smaller ones, uh, like 60 acres. That's why they're numbered down. But something they've done recently is to include some smaller uh, acreage. And there's a number of uh, farms that have applied for around the next year. And it's been on uh, Jim, who's garden crest? Who's garden crest? Or garden crest? Squires. And some of that land is uh, over uh, Perry. And they're part of the uh, grant was who lives in the county, but some of uh, the grounds that lives in the county. I think uh, see how I'm going to be the hard ones that apply in that program. I think that's all they need on this. But they'll be reviewed by the review committee. I uh, know Dan Lewis on that committee. Brett Nass from FSA. Al Craig's on it. Jim Gray. They've added uh, there from uh, Silver Springs there. Denise, she was at it. She's got up and put the Sam here. The administrator at his building. And they'll review all the, the applicants and come up with a ranking to see who we got. Move on to the next. So. We bought the last few years, we brought a lot of money in the county, but uh, that purchase done on our rates. And what it's done uh, as far as solar farms, solar can be put on this, this land. Wind can be put solar can. So we kind of protect the farmland from solar taking up a lot of acres of wind. Smith Falls and Trues and Emmerlands and now Prairie Crest and Southern Old, they've covered a lot of area in the area with this. The farms have all gotten a, a worse yeah. to this point. Yeah. They control a lot of land too. Right? Yes. They're actually, they've got you surrounded. You should get in. I know. Should. Forever is a long time. Yeah. Yeah. There's, 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 there's a you get it, the dungeon to your knee. This land was from an agriculture. Find your way out of it, I guess, if you really want to try. But this is forever. Okay, Abby. I'll go first because I'm like bad news there because I'm the only that's going to be generally. Um, so I just want to give everybody a quick update. Um, so we had some questions about Camp Wyamoko. So we are currently, uh, my board has a subcommittee that is currently meeting about camp and they're going to put forth recommendations for the future of camp um, at the end of summer. So uh, for those of you who don't know, we were able to run camp in 2020 and 2021 because of COVID. Um, we were able to do some limited programming at the camp and we also uh, applied some of our PPP funds to camp in order to make sure that the budget was 
say relatively balanced. Um, unfortunately, even the year before um, COVID, campus significantly declined participation. Um, the other piece that we always struggled with at Camp Wyoming is staffing. So it is really hard to find. Um, if you run a summer camp, you have to have a registered nurse on staff. It's very hard to keep a registered nurse. It is now part of the number to find somebody who's willing to serve as a registered nurse at a camp. The other piece are our skilled counselors. So things like lifeguards, archery, all of those pieces. We used to staff those with international students. It's not much harder to do that. We obviously could have done under COVID and now it's still very difficult. So that subcommittee is looking at making recommendations as to whether, you know, do we look at restructuring how we utilize camp? We're looking at running it out for various things, um, or, or do we you know consider what we do with that asset in the long run? So um, if anybody has any suggestions about potential grants or, or opportunities with camp, feel free to reach out to me because we're kind of looking at every every possible option. Um, we're also talking with the Boy Scouts. They recently sold one of their camps and are, are consolidating, so there's a possibility they might want to use some of our camp, and we're talking to them about kind of what they're seeing. It's not unique to 4-H camps. Pretty much every summer camp in the country is seeing declining participation. Um, and 4-H camps in the state that tend to do the best right now are those that are downstate because they can run day camps location-wise, right? They're in the suburbs, it's relatively easy to reach them. We unfortunately don't have that option. Um, so, for a bunch of options we can, if you're receiving questions or have suggestions or thoughts, feel free to reach out. Um, the other quick update before I turn over to the 4-H news is, so Joan has officially retired, which means um, a lot of her previous appointments are being shared by myself and Don. Um, so I will be a CEO of our land. I'm taking her place on the um, Urban Act Committee. For the protection plan, and we'll be helping with that. And James Wright and I have sat down a couple times and gone through all that paperwork. <laughs> so I've just started reading through our, our rankings, essentially. And so I'm excited. So Joe gave me a, a thorough education in her last few weeks. So I'll be stepping in her shoes there. Um, and then we're looking at restructuring our egg staff a little bit. Uh, Joe was obviously partially our egg leader and then also served on the Northwest New York team. That meant that half of her salary line came out of that team. So we're having to restructure now that we're paying the full team fees. So look for some news about that in the next month or two. And we're going to campus to restructure things a little bit there. Um, and we just had our garden day sale, which was very successful this year. So that was held out of the garage at our offices. And we should have the final tally for that pretty soon. Now it's wrapping it up. But big success. So we'll have to points. She's great. Well, then we have a replacement for Joel in his place. So at our end, probably not, because honestly, we, won't, we wouldn't be able to pay our team's fee and probably staff that position at the same level. Jonah was a master's degree level um, employee and also had four years of experience. So the replacement level there is probably not going to shake out. I would probably be looking at hiring multiple someone down the line as a kind of younger at a career, maybe, to sort of offset at that. On the teams, there will be a replacement for two reasons. One, it's incredibly hard to find another John Petson. So what she did was a lot of succession planning um, and working with farms to transition in various ways. It's really hard to find some of that particular skill set. Um, the other piece is, like everyone, they see reduced funding at the team's level. They brought in a lot of grants, but probably not enough to offset an entire person. There's another person there that does farm management. Yeah, yeah, they have two people, and so they're going to kind of pick up some of Joan's uh, work. And then the two folks that we brought in, I think, here most recently, Caitlin and Margaret, are picking up a lot of Joan's dairy load, as well as a lot of the local work here. Caitlin spent most of her time in Wyoming County already. So there won't be, there shouldn't be too many gaps, and we're still trying to figure out where those gaps might be so we can fill them um, over the next couple months. And Joan is still herself involved in a couple things in retirement at the moment we've been chatting about. So I think by end of summer, we should have a better sense of where we need to fill some of those gaps. But the team should be pretty solid, and we're just looking at restructuring what we do. Questions? Turn over to Holly for some more issues. Good morning. Here I go. Grab a few up here. And you can get those on past.
So just some quick updates from 4-H. Um, since the last time I was here, we are getting ready to, uh, it's June 1st, we're getting ready to this month celebrate our 4-H centennial for Wyoming County. So it's the 100th anniversary of our 4-H program, which is pretty, uh, pretty exciting for us. On June 12th, which is Sunday, we're going to have a celebration at the fairgrounds um, in Pike. And so it'll be a Sunday afternoon. We're going to have different uh, avenues for lunch. And we have a catered lunch um, that you can purchase ahead of time. And then the Pike firemen are going to do a anniversary for us. In addition to that, um, we're going to have Kelly's old timers there um, playing music for us for a good portion of the afternoon in the new dairy barn or egg expo center. And um, we're going to have yard games and good old fashioned traditional games like sack races and you know, egg tosses, different things like that for the kids to take part in. Then a little bit of a uh, formal ceremony towards the end of the afternoon. So it's just going to be a great time for 4-H for families, young and older, um, to get together and enjoy each other. We're going to have displays in the youth building. We've been having people drop off. Mostly it's been clothing items that they have uh, made over the years. I think the uh, the ones that are the oldest currently is some things that were um, constructed back in the 70s uh, for the 4-H program and through the fashion review and different things like that. So we're super excited about that. I do think somewhere in your agenda there may be some proclamation uh, information there. So when that's the time to discuss that further. Um, other exciting news for us is, um, always for me at least, uh, our meat animal program still alive and strong. We finally have had all of our weigh-ins. We've got all of our numbers for this year. So we have, I think it is 40, we've got 41 participants for our beef area. We've got about nine dairy steers and the rest of them are all beef bread steers. We're back up, we've got 103 youth that are raising market hogs. We tagged in um, last month earlier, 206 animals for that program. So there's hundreds of market hogs running around the county, growing well, hopefully right now. We've got 18 youth in our market land project this year, which is up last year. We ended up with about nine or 10 kids at the fair with lambs. Prices were really great last year. So we saw a resurgence in lambs this year. We've got 30 youth raising broilers. They have not received those yet. Um, they will hatch right about the 14th. Um, so in about two weeks or so, the chicks will hatch. They get delivered to us um, through Herman Weber, through uh, Pennsylvania, they hatch somewhere down in Pennsylvania, right up here in a van, and then we'll distribute 355 or so chicks to kids. And I'll uh, raise you. They can call me when they come in. It is <laughs> As long as they're all really healthy, it's a super fun day. Yeah. <laughs> it's something like fun day. They are. So in eight weeks time, they grow from you know, the day old fluffy pupil, the yellow chick, to eight to ten. So the poor kids, they work hard and they push them hard and um, grow an amazing product. It's not like a chicken that you find in the local grocery store. Like it's not a rotisserie chicken by any means. Um, these are like family dinner kind of things. Oh, the chicken is cost, though. You want to tell what? <laughs> they were pricey. I remember that. And she got a nice bowl with them. Yeah, they were running down with the chicken. Running <laughs> <laughs> chicken. Oh, and it was eight of them. <laughs> but they, are, they were very good. <laughs> they, were, they are. They are amazing. I'm so proud I still got one. You still have one. It's a commemorative. You're out of Yep. <laughs> Yeah, at this point, you might want to keep it there. <laughs> but, <laughs> Just keep it there, Joe. <laughs> Just keep it in the freezer. <laughs> yes, so, um, yeah, so this year, we're still actually waiting to hear any information or updates from the state. Um, yesterday, I actually got some encouraging news. Um, the local our area state um, vet tech person actually contacted me yesterday and said, I haven't heard anything from the state yet. So they're setting up their polarum testing, which is a actual uh, 
it's a blood test that they do on all the chickens each year that come to fair um, that haven't perhaps come out of a certified pulmorum or salmonella free facility. Um, and so she is scheduling and moving forward with those tests. So that's an encouraging note, at least yesterday, um, about the potential for showing um, poultry at fair. I think it was back in, I think it was 2015 or 16, we actually had, it was the same virus. There was a bad wave of it coming through in that year. We weren't allowed to have poultry at the fair. The broiler um, program was still able to go through. We couldn't show them, um, but we were able to have the kids take them for processing. And Herman Weber does that for us. And so out of the kids, um, birds that they took for processing, he was able to pull out the best pairs uh, for everyone to have saleable lots. And then the youth as their education components, in addition to the classes and different things that they do, um, we actually did uh, showmanship, we call it modified showmanship, and we actually used, they were toy stuffed bird chickens, so like just a regular plush animal in the shape and size of a chicken. And they were able to go motions of showmanship. It looked a little funny and they chuckled a little bit, um, but they were still able to go around and identify the different parts of the bird, talk about their feed and nutrition programs, and get that element in. So we have contingency plans in case we can't get out chickens. Um, but again, so on the livestock side, gearing up, uh, getting excited for what's to come, um, same with dairy and horses, all of the other animal science sides. We had, as listed here, lots of educational opportunities and events for the kids. Since probably about December, we started those, and each month, each area offers at least one different workshop for um, the youth that are involved. Um, last time I was here, I think it was the last time, we actually talked about the STEM side of things, and we talked about we have kind of like a lost audience of young uh, kind of adolescent boys. So we've been working on trying to remedy that a little bit. Um, so I have uh, re revived um, some of the things that we've done in the past. Um, we did a soldering workshop. So I taught a group of young men and women uh, the art of soldering. Uh, we did actually build game boards that they could use, the old Simon Says games. Uh, where you push the different numbers and tones and such. Uh, we built those in a workshop. Um, I have done a rocketry series. So we went through principles of flights, uh, built uh, paper rockets, hardware rockets, different things like that. And then we built model rockets and took them out to camp and launched them. That is always a lot of fun. Most of the kids went home with their rockets and they do with organic trees um, at the edges of the uh, soccer fields at camp. Um, that hopefully will recover for them. We did do some STEM robotic um, meetings for Clover Buds, so those are our youngest four teachers, so that they could get to that kind of STEM science field. And last week, I mentioned last week, we built birdhouses. So we had a local family that actually donated uh, 20 birdhouse kits, little birdhouse kits, and uh, cut them out and made the patterns for us. And so downstairs, we had exciting evening where I had about 15, 15 and 20 youth hammering out birdhouses in LC1. Um, so then <laughs> that, <laughs> that was definitely a town thing. Um, but they had a great time. They all went home with birdhouses. The goal for that is since birdhouse kind of season uh, for bluebirds is over currently, um, the goal is to simply bring them back to the fair, bring them to the youth building as a project, and then they can put them up in the fall or mid-winter when it's time to put out the blue bird houses and do that. So we've been working um, hard on that STEM components of, of our programming. The last things, uh, quick add in the classroom update, Stephanie is busy in Warsaw and um, Perry. She did incubation and embryology projects in four different schools this year. We were able to, through one of our STEM grants, um, actually purchase 20 brand new incubators this year. And the neat thing about these incubators, A, they were brand new, so they worked really well. 
um, for us. And secondly, they all had clear dome tops on them. So if you've ever seen a traditional incubator, they're usually, they look like a styrofoam cooler and they have two very small windows that you can view through the top. The new incubators that we were able to get this year for that grant money um, actually had a clear, you could see everything 365 degrees around. Um, so they could watch the eggs in their classroom all day, every day. They had automatic turners in them. So they just, it was like a carousel. They very slowly moved around it. We actually put a paper clip on one of the things just to see if it actually was moving. Um, throughout the day. So it would make two rotations throughout a 24 hour period. Um, but the hatch rates were very, very successful this year. And the kids got to actually see from their seats or inside the classroom, could see a lot more of the process. So I have a feeling that next year we're going to have a lot more classrooms uh, excited about incubation and looking for. Uh, looking for this project. So we'll have to do extra rounds for assuming next year. And then last but not least, since it's June and dairy month and school is ending, Stephanie is busy coordinating and helping out with three different ag days at local schools. So um, Perry, we started that one last year with the Perry MFA and continuing that this year. She's currently working with Warsaw Central School um, to create a new ag day for them this year, uh, later this month. And uh, Attica, their FFA group is very strong in putting on an ad day, but we'll be having that one also. So we'll be busy between the centennial and all those other fun things that we got going on in June. And then onward and upward to great time. So that's what we've got going on. Katie told me that you had a cooking meeting. Do you have 750 kids in the role? Um, actually, right now we are. I looked the other day, we're just shy of actually 670, which is down quite a bit. We have kind of we had a real peak there about 2015 16, um, where we had gotten back up over a thousand members. We had a real peak in numbers. Um, that's a uh, that. You know, it was it was a great. We have we still have a lot of great things going on, but it's a, a different group. Um, went through two years worth of not being able to do a ton of things. Um, we lost some momentum in the club program. People shifted priorities, had to change priorities, and so we're working now on building that area back up and fortifying that. And trying to support, um, we still have, even though it's 670 members, we still have close to 150 registered volunteers. And those are the ones that do the paperwork and you know are right there in the in the trenches with us doing programming. And so I don't know where you know if a thousand is where we're gonna be at in five years, um, because again, you know, things change, and that's why we're also trying to shift. Not taking away from family consumer science and animal agriculture and those things, but also creating <laughs> the best stuff uh, in some of the newer you know, technologies and ideas and keep up to date with, with our, our kids of today. So, that's it. Any questions? <laughs> No, because she's going to do a chairman's confirmation because this is two days prior to our board meeting. So, but I do have a nice have first. Yeah, but we're going to do a really nice chairman's confirmation like we often do. And uh, hopefully, we'll get it over a Now, hopefully, it will get there, but how it gets there, we don't know yet. I do have a couple of paragraphs that Abby gave us for the proclamation. Perfect. Yeah, hopefully we'll see some of you there and uh, just enjoy the afternoon. Hoping that it's decent weather and just a fun afternoon, fun Sunday at the fairgrounds without the hustle bustle of the fair. <laughs> Mike, that'll be fun, right? <laughs> and if anybody hasn't seen our life-size milking cow, she will be at any of these events and stuff just changed out for antifreeze from the winter. So <laughs> you know what you do with your old seeds.
Yeah, the video wants to truck her around. <laughs> <laughs> so a full size truck under her gloves. Um, and the team left. She's so, a big girl. She is a big girl. She is, she is big and cumbersome to pay up. So. Thank you. Under the dairy industry, you know, Chef Kyle did some farm shine last month for the proclamation of the solution supporting home milk tools and daycare centers. Virtually, I had been around the magazine business to share out and take a picture of. Tiny bit of spike. Tiny bit of spike. And uh, Jen, 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 Jen Connor, Jen grew up in the very center, kind of around the town president. And this is a Pennsylvania magazine that they were in uh, kind of farm in Saratoga County promoting uh, this. And even uh, George Burrell was involved with, with the uh, senator going forward. So I think we were kind of ahead of the game when we did what we did as far as. coming up next week. Um, prep work is done. Got your summer crew hired? Uh, yes. We're going to, I suspect that we'll suffer the same problem everyone else does when it comes time for fair time employees. Okay. You know, we used to rely a lot on high school and college kids and they're not around or, or they can make more money other places. Last year, did you have some people that did it as kids came back? We did, yeah. We've been getting more 
adults that one either wanted a little extra spending money or enjoyed doing it and they came back and sold parking tickets and things of that nature. It is a sign of the times. And I, again, I don't necessarily think it's that the kids aren't there. I think they have a lot of other opportunities. Does a good job. She does a good job. Very accommodating to people. I keep telling her she's too accommodating okay, well, for what she's she earning. Cares. We she cares. Yeah. And um, I, I come up. Why do you go up there on Saturday? Right. Right. Because somebody or somebody a marriage license. Right. And that's what she'll do. She just makes herself available mm -hmm. to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. That's what's 